close is John Reed to his pre-injury level? And if he's not there now, when would you hope to have him? Have him? Yeah, I, I think if, if, if we were playing Saturday, he'd play. But he's played enough football for us. We kind of know where he is, <clears throat> taking our time, kind of easing him back in, um, both physically and mentally. But if, if we were playing a Saturday, he played he played the game. James, how much is that, is that interesting? Well, and uh, as far as recovery from the injury, I, like in terms of 100%, how close is he to it? If, he, if we were going to play a game on Saturday, he played. Okay. James, with respect to your QBs, with Tommy not doing much, uh, obviously, you know what Trace brings to the table. How much of an opportunity is that giving your younger guys? And you can, t can you tell me how they're coming along? Yeah, I think you guys have heard me talk about this in the past, about sometimes it's a blessing in disguise. And don't get me wrong, you know, I'd love for Tommy to be getting a bunch of reps this spring um, from a developmental standpoint. Um, but, it's, but it's been really good for Clifford. You know, it's been really good for Clifford. He's getting a, a bunch of reps in practice. Um, he's making some mistakes. He's learning from it. He's very conscientious. He asks great questions. He takes a lot of really good notes. Our defense does a lot. Um, and, and as you can imagine, during camp and during spring ball, it's probably heavier than it is even during you know, games because we're installing all the things that we may run during the season. And then as the season goes on, we kind of refine and kind of hone in on who we're going to be. But you know, right now we're installing every single day. Today was the first day of three down. And that changes all our rules from a protection standpoint and the run game from a blocking perspective. Um, you know, so it's it's been pretty good. You know, that's how we typically install. So, like for example, when the offense is going to do empty, we do a whole empty period. So the defense is just getting all of that at once. Uh, whether it's formation into the boundary, where whether it's unbalanced, whether it's three down, uh, those types of things. So um, it's been a lot, uh, but I think the reps have been good. Uh, Jake is starting to, to to get some reps as well, which is which has been really good. Uh, Schuster's doing a great job. I think Clifford's probably the guy that's got the biggest opportunity right now. Um, and I think where you're probably going to really see it paid off is not really now. It's he's learning now. He'll learn ev even more kind of going through these cut-ups between now and the start of camp. And I think you'll really see growth between now and camp is, is, is when I think it's going to really start to pay off for him and us. What kind of quarterback is he? Like his personality, his play style? What, what would you say, or is it too early to, to tell yeah, I, th I think in some ways it's too early to tell because a guy's practice demeanor doesn't always align with their game demeanor. Um, I do know from the time he's been here, um, I think he's got really good football intelligence. I think he's got really good football instincts. Better athlete than probably people give him credit for. He's highly, highly competitive. You guys know I don't, I don't talk about injuries a whole lot, um, but since it's over, like he, he missed a weight uh, lift in the weight room one day and punched the bench and broke his hand. You know, and this was this was months ago, um, and obviously that's not what we want a quarterback to do. It was a great teaching moment, but he's a very very fiery competitor. Um, the morning workouts, he's always matched up with Trace, and and you know he he competes really well with Trace. And Trace, as we all know, is a really good athlete, so he understands the importance of that uh, aspect in our offense. Um, and is really focused on it. It's really dropped his body fat. It's gotten stronger. It's gotten leaner. It's gotten more explosive. James, where's the kicking competition at? I mean, obviously you guys have what you have this spring. What do you like about the guys you have now? We really don't have a competition, to be yeah. honest with you. Um, we know who our punter is and Blake Gilligan. Mm -hmm. um, I do think we have some competition at snapper, although Vasey did a really good job for us last year. And then and kicker, we got Landis. We got we got one kicker right now. I think, I think you know, obviously um, Gilligan, I think, can do it. He did it in high school. We prefer not to mm -hmm. do it. There is an aspect where he may do kickoff. Uh, and it showed he's pretty good at that. And from all the people we've talked to, the kicking gurus plus our internal people, that, that's an easier kind of job to handle, punting and kickoffs where field goals are a lot more technical. Um, I know that may not seem to make sense, but, but from every, everything that everybody's told me, that's the case. So we think he may be able to do punt and kickoff if we need him to. He wants to do that. Um, and then we need to find a, a field goal kicker. This is great work for Landis, but I wouldn't call it a competition because he's the only real true kicker we have in camp right now. Looking at John last season, traveling with the team, how much did that help him last season and how much will that help him this season? Well, I, I think you know, it's hard because we're limited in the numbers that we can travel. So if you're going to travel a guy who can't play, um, you know, you're losing something, obviously. You're losing a young guy that you could develop. You're losing another guy that you're getting game ready to, to <clears throat> see the field. 
but we just felt like with John's maturity and his intelligence, you guys have heard us talk about John in the past, both academically um, and when it comes to football. I mean, he is a football junkie. I think I've talked to you guys about about you know, Jevin is able to look at, you know, the amount of film that guys are watching, and he's like 100 hours ahead of anybody else in the program in terms of the amount of film that he watches. Um, he's been that way since high school. I don't know if you guys remember during the recruiting process, we had the, I think it was the Lash Bash barbecue, and he sat in and watched film the whole time with coaches. You know, it's just, that's kind of who he is. So we felt as coaches, him traveling and being around the guys and his uh, intelligence and his knowledge and, experience that was valuable and the players wanted that and the coaches wanted that so um, I think it also helped keep him engaged uh, because as much as you tell guys to stay locked in and you know, when you're not traveling and you're not on the sideline you know it's it's it, it's difficult do you think he might he, he might watch more film than you do on a given week um I, I don't think so but you know I don't know ours is, ours is tracked um, you know the, the coaches, obviously, you know, we work long days. I was thinking about it this morning because we had a coach visiting us and we we're kind of talking and he threw out a number of hours. You know, we're, we're, you know, we're here all day. You know, we're, you know, I usually get in, as you guys know, pretty early. We have a staff meeting every day at 7. We watch film all day long, combination of film, talk and recruiting, organizational structure, practice plans, things like that. So whether it's recruiting film or game film, I think the coaches watch a lot of film, but I don't track the coaches film hours. James, Billy Fessler was a guy who kind of authored your signaling book the past few years. With him gone, how do you kind of identify a guy who can take over that role? I know Tommy and Jake are still here, but kind of finding someone that, that fits that area that you have to fulfill that maybe people don't talk about. Are you telling me that Billy Fessler wrote and published a book on all our signals for <laughs> the whole conference and country to know? It's on a Google Drive. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously, you know, you know, Billy is coaching. Um, he's finishing up this semester, and he's going to be a coach. So it's a great opportunity. He's already been, he's already received a position. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but he's going to, he's going to Slippery Rock, which is which is awesome. I'm really excited for him, and I'm really happy for him. I saw a couple Slippery Rock guys nodding their head with excitement there. Um, um, he, he couldn't get into East Stroudsburg grad school, so <laughs> where I went to school. So he's going to Slippery Rock. Story. I'm, yeah, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, but I'm really proud of him, and I'm really happy for him. And I think the way he approached his career here, um, you know, kind of got him prepared for the next step. And I think also helped him realize that's what he want, wants to do. And he's going to be a great coach, um, you know. So, so I think you know, we talk all the time about different roles on our team and, and how each role is critical. And Billy's a guy that took his role um, on this team very serious and brought a lot of value coach the younger guys kind of like you look at the third sometimes the third quarterback in the NFL is almost like an older veteran who's coaching the the, the rookie um, and I think that's how kind of Billy Billy has been um, so yeah we got to find out who that's going to be you know I think we got some good candidates and whether it's Schuster or whether it's Clifford or um, you know um, whether it's Zembeck or, or you know some of the freshmen coming in, but we're going to need somebody to do it. It could be even some of the it could be even some of the the receivers, you know, like a shoop or something like that. You know, uh, the managers have done a good job of it as well. So so we'll see. But it is a critical role uh, to the point you're making. James, since the start of spring ball, do you feel like you've learned anything new about your safeties group or gained any clarity there? Well, I think uh, we feel really good about Nick. I think Garrett has kind of separated himself from the pack. Um, you know, in terms of if we were playing Saturday, they'd probably be our two starters. Um, Aaron Monroe is, is, is missing some reps right now during the, the spring, so we're not really factoring him in. And then I think there's a really good competition with that, with that next group of guys, you know, including Lamont, um, Isaiah. I mean, who else am I not Southern. thinking? Southern. Sutherland, as you guys know, we, we've had a man crush on Sutherland since he's got here with his approach and his demeanor. Every play for him is the Super Bowl. I mean, it really is. Walkthroughs, jog throughs, install periods. He is locked in, and we love him. So I think all those guys are going to play. I feel like I'm missing somebody else. Patricia. Patricia. Patricia's been a guy that, that's really been coming on for us. He's had a really good winter. He's had a really good spring. I know Coach Banks has a lot of confidence in him right now. So it's a good group. Um, I don't. I don't think we'll make any decisions. You know, obviously until camp. I think. But if we were playing Saturday, right now it would be Garrett and Nick. How is Garrett separated himself? Just. I. I think a lot of it is he's gotten more confident. He's gotten stronger. He's gotten more explosive. He's gotten faster. 
Um, and he's a veteran guy. You know, he's a very mature guy. He's approached us the right way since he stepped on campus. Um, as you guys, you know, have seen at multiple positions, but, but specifically safety, you know, we've had guys that have stepped into that role, starting with Malik and then obviously last year with Apke, um, guys that maybe didn't have prominent roles but kept the right attitude and approach, approach and then when their time came, they were ready. And that, that's a little bit like Garrett, you know. So, um, you know, there's still some time, obviously, um, for those other guys to, to, to catch up and, and pass those, you know, those two guys. But um, right now, I think it's a, a really good group from top to bottom. James, two weeks, or I guess three weeks in now, your impressions on Zach Coons and Micah Parsons and how they've transitioned so far? You know, Zach is, is pretty far along in the passing game, as you could imagine. Um, you know, in the run game, he's got a lot of work to do. Um, it's a little bit probably like with when Mike Gesicki got here. It never blocked. It never really been in a three-point stand. It stands had never been attack, attached to the tackle. Um, so you know, it's a process. The thing that's that's good though is we're at a little bit different stage as a program. Where Mike, we didn't really have a whole lot of flexibility. Kind of had to throw him in there just based on numbers and depth and things like that. Um, where now we're in a situation where, you know, if almost at every position, if guys are going to contribute early, it's because they've earned it and beat people out at every position. Um, so he's getting stronger. He's getting more confident. Um, he's a really good kid. He learns well. Um, but, yeah, the, the area he's got to improve dramatically is, is in the run game. And in the pass game, He's got to be more refined with all of his routes and the details. He just was a better athlete than everybody in high school. So um, we're pleased with where he is. He can really run for a kid who's legitimately 6'7". Um, <coughs> Mike is doing really well. Obviously, the position is new to him. Um, he can run. He's got really good instincts. Um, you know, little things like stance and start. He hasn't really found a stance that he's comfortable in yet, uh, which I know sounds you know crazy, but it's it's more challenging than, than you'd think, to be honest with you. So you're not false stepping and things like that. But when he makes a decision, he can flat out run, and he's running by people. There's times where, like, you know, he'll backdoor the play um, and go two gaps back, and you really shouldn't do that. And you're saying no, 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 but then he makes a tackle for a tackle for loss in the backfield. So it's like no, 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 yes, yes, yes. Um, he's got a lot of ability. He learns really well. Uh, we have moved him. We, we had him at the mic position, but we moved him over to the will position, which is our other box linebacker. And it just takes a little bit off of his plate for right now. Um, and I think it's, it's going to help him grow and, uh, and, and evolve the way we need him to. But so far, so good. Hey, James. Thank you, Coach. Uh, sorry. I'll get you. Last one. Uh, just what you talked about there. Uh, when it comes to you know learning habits and learning good habits or unlearning bad ones, how long does that take for, uh, for a, a guy who's coming in or a guy who you have to kind of reteach some stuff like that? Well, with him, that really doesn't factor in because he's playing a position he's never played before. Yeah. I was just speaking so, generally. Yeah, I got you. I got you. Um, but I think, I think it depends. I think that's why a lot of times – Coaches don't really like the guy who's been to the trainer. And I'm not knocking trainers. I mean, they do a great job all over the country. But my point is, is you hear a lot of people discussing right now, like over the last five years, ten years, maybe a lot of discussion on kids specializing. Well, the problem is, you know, you're specializing and you're training something for how many years? And maybe that's a different technique or a different belief than what the college is going to teach. So I think for most college coaches, you'd like guys that are playing sports all year round, three sports, football, basketball, baseball, track, whatever it is, and just learn to compete and, and have fun and enjoy your high school experience and then get here and really refine the fundamentals that you want and the techniques that you want. So I think you can make an argument. Obviously, the, the trainer program has worked for some people as well, and I get it. Um, but I do think there's value from coaches that you just want guys that are competing and playing all the time so you have more of a clean slate because, as you're exactly right, breaking habits, it's, it's hard. It's like all these quarterback gurus that are going to change a quarterback's motion in six months. You see, you hear it every offseason. Oh, yeah, he's been with this trainer. He's changed his motion. They show videos, and as soon as he gets in the game, he starts throwing the same way as he was throwing with his dad in the backyard since he was seven years old. 
You can, you can correct foot, the footwork and the techniques. You can make subtle adjustments, but you're not changing. I haven't seen it. Um, so I, I think that kind of that kind of reinforces the point that you make about about bad habits. Um, you know, I'd rather just go recruit a bunch of guys that are playing sports all year long. Wrestling, you know, wrestling, track, basketball, baseball, football. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you.